All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the opening of this conference. Um, it's amazing. Um, it's amazing to see you all here. Thanks for coming. It's always very exciting to be happy in person. And um, it's a special occasion in this was really exciting. <laughs> Um, this is this is a good start. Um, this is the 14th international conference. So a bit of history there, but um, every everyone always sees that. Um, I want to start with a big thank you to our host. Um, it's always cool to visit other institutions, get to see how, how they're operating and what space they're 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 in, and obviously the mayor has played a a really good um, first part of the day, so, even though it was it was supposed to be raining, but now it's second place. That's nice. My name is Lily Newhouse. Um, I am the research network chair for this conference. Um, and uh, in my in my regular day job, I'm, a, I'm an associate professor at the University of Calgary in Canada with the School of Architecture and Maths, where I'm also the associate dean of research. So I traveled all the way from Canada uh, yesterday, um, and there was snow on the ground and I left uh, yesterday. And it's snowing today, so it's quite a, quite a big, big difference for me, and it's very exciting to uh, just land in late spring essentially where everything is growing that uh, grass is green and so on people are actually sort of enjoying themselves in the early round even late at night so that's that's pretty cool uh for me to see um we also have a lot of uh, exciting public spaces in town but they're all indoors <laughs> maybe some of you have heard of it. Famous plus between system that we have and how we have a door network of public spaces. Um, but to be able to, to just, um, you know, sort of stroll in the streets is quite uh, It's nice uh, to do, be able to do that again. Um, since the inception of this uh, conference series in 2010, um, we have been. Um, Hosting this annual series with a very diverse community of scholars, researchers, and practitioners with a, with a shared passion for investigating the intricate relationships between the constructed, the so called, and the natural environment. Um, here, here on European soil in Austria, in Vienna, um, one of the it's definitely one of the flagship city destinations with a, with a wealth of history and perception. Uh, this perception of uh, what, what urban spaces did change is probably for all of us who arrived here um, from, from another destination. And, and for me, I'm originally from Switzerland, so I'm kind of familiar uh, with the cultural context, but the urban tradition is very dramatic to me. And, and now having lived in Tower for quite some time, um, this becomes really obvious as I, as I come back to this to, to this cultural context. Um, how space is actually used and how it is used um, <clears throat> differently. So I would like to add a, a very brief personal um, of, of how I see the relationship between a social and a sort of construct. Now living in Canada, which is a very young country um, in any measure, uh, it has a very short urban history. It has essentially evolved in lobster um, with the North American colonial project. Um, and it is it is custom to acknowledge the local traditional territories uh, in Canada. 
And then um, I just a little note on that. Um, how how we how we do it in Canada? Um, that needs a little bit of um, history introduction, I guess. Um, but it has to do with the relationship, obviously, between the settlers or uh, and the land. Um, where urbanization and building or constructing the urban environment is, is in many ways to, a, to establish an occupation of the people, to occupy the territories uh, as a plan, as a plan. And the original people, the first nations, were easily displaced by, by the center to settlers throughout the, the last hundred years. And, and openly and systematically marginalized. Um, and that's that's kind of short. That's the short story. Um, the um, the longer version is disturbing. Um, only just recently, society has chosen to to sort of examine that relationship and that history in a bit more detail. And the traditional territory. Uh, territorial culture in that context is a little higher. And today, this awareness um, is kind of taking place in society, especially since 2015 with the uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And now, the traditional territorial acknowledgement is, is, the, is kind of like, um, a regular. Uh, uh, a regular contribution to that conversation at the beginning of every gathering. Yeah. It's a formal acknowledgement of the land and its original occupants. It means, in many cases, these groups, um, the original occupants, that is, were stewards of the land for many, many years before the arrival of the and the First Nation groups have an intricate relationship with the land. They're usually being referred to as the stewards of the land. And their relationship is, um, is built on a, on a sense of relationship um, and exchange rather than what we enforce today in the school. So the, the, this term, stewards of the land, is kind of an important attribution. In, a, in addition to acknowledging um, the specific groups that have actually stewarded the land uh, for generations, um, <clears throat> it, it is also, it serves the land acknowledgement and serves as a request to enter. Essentially, it's a formal gesture to ask for permission to be on someone else's land. And you can you can sort of guess where this is going. Um, for me, as a very late uh, European settler arriving really late, hundred years too late, essentially, and I moved six years ago. I usually identify myself as an uninvited guest in this context. It's a gesture of respect, um, but this speaks to the immediate past. <laughs> and a complicated relationship um, with how it was built and with whom and who was in it. It is a bit of a feeble attempt to acknowledge the struggle that is reconciliation, um, but it is an interesting problem of how different cultures and world groups are coming together. And in many ways, that acknowledgement also <laughs> Acknowledges the limitations of our own the way we think about what we are, um, <laughs> and the way we believe, and the way we um, it is. It makes it very difficult to actually understand and see how somebody else is. So, so that's a kind of station um, and interesting. In Calgary, I would uh, normally acknowledge the three indigenous groups that are, that, um, whose home is in Treaty 7 territory, which is uh, where the city of Calgary is located. 
This includes the Tupina First Nation and the Estonian Akoda, but also the Blackfoot Confederacy. Um, and in addition to indigenous bands, Calgary is also home to uh, the Métis people of Region 5 and 6. As many of you know, the, the Métis people um, are today uh, a recognized First Nations group together with the indigenous people and the Inuit. Uh, and they emerged as descendants of the early, mostly French uh, settlers and First Nations. Well, this same kind of history might apply to the territory uh, here in Vienna if we go far enough back uh, in time. I guess um, it's certainly true for many of the places that we host the conference. So last year, um, we were, the conference was in Hawaii, many of you have been, um, where uh, with its own First Nation people, and the year before in Mexico. Um, same, same, similar story, and then over there in Calgary the, the year before that, um, sort of the tail end of the tail end of it, where it's one of the one of the special So I think the um, examining this kind of history with, in terms of the relationship with the land and the sort of is certainly something that is underway in many parts of the world, um, in many communities, in many societies. Um, and reconciliation with the past deeds and misdeeds as part of the wider efforts, uh, but also uh, more broadly in terms of equity, diversity, and accessibility, uh, is very important part of that we will And it's it's definitely an important aspect also as part of the conversation here at the conference. Um, where many of your contributions will we speak to this in, in some way uh, or and, and, um, <clears throat> and that's the exciting part about coming together and bringing these kind of stories and histories with us uh, and sharing it here um, to find to find new ways and approaches to to. Uh, but also here at the annual conference, um, the exchange of those ideas, engagement, and discussions, and fostering these connections, um, that's just uh, in, in itself uh, an amazing opportunity to get together and, and share. Um, people from Europe are right here, of course, but also uh, people from most America uh, and the Middle East and Asia um, are coming. Today. A multitude of differences um, we all can learn from, and it's not TikTok, and it's not Instagram, um, and it's not AI generated speech here. Um, it's it's the real the real people are here and the real groups to to share. And I think that's I mean, that's also a, something that that kind of leads in and connects to to our special focus here. The, um, with the asocial forms uh, question that we proposed this year. Asocial forms and uh, reconfiguring possibilities for urban space in response to that. Uh, this theme aims to stimulate research and dialogue on and reconciling the growing trend of individualization, isolation, and disconnection um, with the with the creation of fair and appropriate spaces. Um, and many of you will, will speak to that from your own perspectives. Uh, what you're seeing and, and what, what the current trends are in spaces that you work. This is in addition to our overarching themes that we, that we have. We use the thematic streams that we usually offer design of space in place, constructing the environment, environment impact, and social impact. Those, those general themes that we have already. And it will serve as a platform to explore the latest research and practices that you bring to this to this one. The asocial society or asocial forms um, is a really, for me specifically, is a really curious term. 
what it actually does. And it originated for me in a in a in a research call um, that we that we came across that was put out by the National Canadian Research Council. And I figured, or I was surprised that when the National Research Council using that terminology to describe um, to describe an uh, emerging research area. It was it was called the Emergent Social Society. And um, with, together with my research group, we, we immediately responded to this because obviously for, for me as a researcher, I'm interested in the relationship between sort of collaboration and physical form that really took the scope to uh, what we are what we are doing in the sense of constructed constructed environment, a fascinating question. Um, and, uh, and of course we are all painfully aware of um, how that relationship is being formed and, and how it influences the form that is influences our behavior. Who who have for for decades um, amongst many other scholars prominently pointed out that connection, that relationship between urban morphology and human behavior and sort of trends. Just thinking of technology, for example, driving um, driving that that transition, transportation, especially the automobile, um, in terms of individualization, specifically urban sprawl, the rise of suburbia, um, are are sort of expressions uh, of that. Essentially, if you go back, and the, and that's an interesting aspect of. To now, it's always looking back, um, and, and that raises a few few interesting questions too. Um, but definitely, the individual plot of land, the yard, the fence, the garage, the neighbor, and the commute are also loose terms that you know come to mind under some circumstances. And all this is truly influenced. Um, by, by the different generations and the way the way these generations think about themselves, uh, how they've grown up and how they're forming relationship to each other and to others in their surroundings. So in some way all these TV cartoons and sitcoms that we that we've been been watching are sort of a broad or spoken Interest. One of the from the research that we contributed to that call, one of the very intriguing results was <laughs> was the observation that um, in that space there is a lot of over focusing on marginalized groups in our society, where we attribute sort of as an interpretation of these, say, on very specific, specific groups, um, less affluent areas, 20 times likely to be researched in an affluent neighborhood from, from what we've seen in our scope study. So, so that sort of speaks to the way our society is primed to, to really focus in. Nothing's been written about my community community. So so that gives us a big picture where where this this kind of uh, focuses on. But given that the examples that come to mind are uh, really amongst other things potentially close to, to the emergent society, it's it's surprising because these examples are always talking to to the general to the general or affluent uh, activities. Um, and it means that there's kind of a, a mismatch, I would say. We are looking where a social society is created. 
um, third world where you actually, sorry, we are not about this society is created. We are focusing where we suspect it is it is threatened. So so that sort of shifts the focus uh, to towards a, a, a different field. The OA social society as a term also raises many interesting questions, and um, and that's something um, that was um, was came out of the conversation with Martin Spring, who was our keynote speaker this morning. Uh, when you ask him about it, his immediate response was, um, "If we have an social society, what would this social society look like?" So, so there, there is a, there is also a, an interesting aspect constructing these terminologies, the way they are positioned, and um, they're obviously culturally defined, and they're, they're sitting in a specific time. And that also needs, needs to be um, examined. But to go back uh, maybe to our to our conference here. Um, I spoke to the, the great opportunity we can now have over the next two days to exchange, to get to know each other, and to share learn from each other. Um, it will be um, it will be those rich discussions that will have in the in the sessions, in the in the breakout circles, and after the keynotes. Um, that that will really make this an even special event um, where we can talk about contemporary challenges that that will. That um, and I also hope that this conference will serve as a catalyst for forging new connections and collaborations amongst, uh, amongst all of us, also mm -hmm. bring some impactful research in for, for the future. We have um, three really exciting keynotes for you in the for you in those two days only. Um, um, so that's 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 quite a big program. And it's a, for me personally, it's a very big sign. Milena Ivkovic will speak tomorrow. Bahamur Nasia will talk this afternoon and this morning. It's great uh, to talk um, to you about the, about the work that they're doing. The exciting thing for me is that all three of them are working in a space that straddles both academia and in, in very different they each have a question about social organization and strategies transferable to, to physical space, physical programs and arrangements. And in their individual ways, they specifically each wrestle with the questions that emerge from this relationship. A relationship that really works both ways, and that's the tricky part. Social configurations influence physical form, and physical form obviously feeds back into into the possibilities of sort of um, I also want to mention that we are looking at um, putting together a special issue from this conference. So um, based on the papers that, that you are presenting, uh, that's specifically dedicated to this conference. And I, I would like to invite you to please consider submitting your um, to to this issue, and we're looking at sort of six to eight papers that that will form the main body of the of the, the the issue. But I think it would really continue the conversation uh, more broadly. There we have some So with that, I think uh, on behalf of the organizing committee and. Um, my, my sincere welcome again. Great to see you all here, and I'm really looking forward to those, those next two days of conversation and presentations. Uh, from, from, from so I'll hand it over to Phil, who's the actual founder of organizing, to, um, to share the details. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, one of the things that's uh, wonderful about this group is it's like a family. 
So many of you I remember uh, and have been part of this journey um, uh, over the 14 years. We're like, you know, we've crossed over in our teenage years and you know what that means. Uh, so, uh, but I'd like to uh, recognize a few people. Uh, firstly, uh, Jeff Hoss, who was our founding research network chair. Jeff, you want to keep writing? <laughs> Um, and so yeah, it, it's uh it's it's been a wonderful journey together and uh, it's uh, great that we can continue these conversations. Uh, uh I just want to talk briefly about what we're doing at this conference and a little bit about the um, uh, research network to make sure you make the most of what we are trying to do here. Uh firstly, you've already seen we've done this for a few years now that we don't have a printed program. Uh, we don't have a printer program for two reasons. One, it's an environmental disaster to those printer programs. Uh, and two, you know, one of the things that we thought about coming out of COVID uh, is you know, what's a kind of infrastructure, a digital infrastructure uh, that we can uh, uh, build to help build resources for the community. You know, we uh, learned that online, live, stream conferences. Um, most often a nightmare. <laughs> you know, there is this time zone, whose time zone can get excluded by all that kind of uh, um, uh, staff who's in person who online. So what we've done is that each of you have a presentation page. Uh, we encourage you to upload digital content to that page after the conference, uh, um, whether it's PowerPoint, video, CAD files, whatever it is that you think would uh, accompany your presentation. We have uh, 40 or so online presentations. If you go to that tab, it's, as it's asynchronous uh, content. And you know, what we're trying to do is break the temporal boundaries of both conferences. You know, it's not just two days. So you can come back to that site, you can see the content that was there, you can add peers uh, from that um, space that someone has an added content, you can request that content. So we're experimenting with what's an ongoing dialogue that comes out of that uh, conference as a resource that as members you can come back to. Um, the other thing is that we are not just a conference. Um, uh, we have a wonderful uh, journal as well. Uh, we uh, really encourage you uh, to use that as a resource. You know, one of the things that's included in your registration uh, is membership, which gives you access uh, to the uh, journal content. It's very important to us that um, we get access to the things that we produce here. Um, uh, so uh, that's another big part of what we do. So I've kind of raised from the course of the too much. Uh, the uh, final thing is that we have a wonderful book series. And Berg is here, Berg, you want to stand up one second? Yes. We'll give him a round of applause. Uh, uh, his book, uh, Designing Complexity, is a wonderful uh, uh, text. Uh, he's presenting on that book. Um, when are you presenting? Uh, on the last day, correct? Uh, uh, before the closing session. Uh, this is my Oprah time as well, you know, because I would say go buy the book, but you should buy the book. Uh, but also, you all get a copy uh, because in your registration, you also. Uh, offer you um, complimentary, it's not complimentary, but you get access to all of the uh, books that we have published as well as the copies. Uh, uh, again, um, that, that's, that's, that's part of us, our commitment uh, to ensure that uh, the content that's produced in this group uh, is accessible to this group. Um, that's the basic overview. You know, I really appreciate you being here. Um, you know, it's a complicated time to be out here in the world and, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, thank you for being here and I hope you have a productive two days. That's it.